If I get possessed, I promise I will tell you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Ugh, that's all we want. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. If I find Let out that you were possessed and then we all get possessed and you didn't tell us, unacceptable. Unacceptable. That, that's unacceptable. all I'm going to say. Yeah, 100%. I'm Jamie. And I'm Nikisha, and this is Talking Horror with Jamie. And Nikisha. Where we share our love for spooky things and talk horror through the lens of human behavior. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Wow, today starts a long saga, a long but plentiful saga. <laughs> some some would say a groovy saga a groovy Ooh. saga because today we are talking about the 1981 american supernatural horror film the evil dead getting oh, ready bum, 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 getting ready <laughs> for the release of the new evil dead and we'll talk all about our relationship with those movies because I think this might be on the top of Jamie's list. What? No. I think what? so. <laughs> I think she's she's a fan of the Ash and all his evil dead friends. And we'll talk all about that. <laughs> <His evil laughs> All of his evil dead friends. I don't know. You see what my relationship is with this movie already. So, <laughs> so this movie was written and directed by Sam Raimi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. In his directorial debut, <clears throat> according to the Wikipedia, and it stars Bruce Campbell, Ellen Sand, sorry, Ellen Sandwise, Richard Demonicor, Betsy Baker, and Teresa Tilly. As you can see, I just wrote these names down and didn't read them at all. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm already obsessed with this being brand new for you. Like, yes. Yeah. Like, this is such a foundation of certain types of horror movies. And I am so excited to get to experience this with you for the first time because I experienced Whew. these for the first time with Jamie during the height of the pandemic, like during oh, lockdown. Oh, okay. I, I had only seen uh, Army of Darkness a long time ago super fun campy whatever mm -hmm. um but like so i'm like right in between the two of you so i'm like i'm i'm ecstatic that we're doing all these movies leading up to evil dead rise yes i will say that <clears throat> the only thing i kind of know from it and i think is a reference towards it is when i used to watch the cartoon from cartoon network billy and mandy and they had a character on there mm. called hans and he had this little hand chainsaw thing and an mm. eye patch and he was the one that was coming in and fighting all of these ghosts and zombies and things that that was his brand and i feel like that's the only relationship that i have with with the evil dead is this cartoon making fun of it that's which so i didn't funny. realize even in just watching the first movie that this is where it was going to somebody with with a chainsaw arm or whatever that's going to happen in all the other movies but i'm super excited to get into all of the things because this is a, a classic a cult classic for a lot of, of people and mm -hmm. i'm glad that i'm able to experience this with people who know all about it so you can explain it to me because I need all of the explanation. I need to know what what the deal is, what the hype is, why this is a cult classic. So, spoilers for, obviously, The Evil Dead. If you have not watched it like me, don't be like me. Please go and watch all of these movies and be in the know if you call yourself a horror movie person. And, Jamie, tell us all the trigger warnings in this movie. Uh, uh, <laughs> my brain went blank. Um, yes, there's lots of insides on the outside. Um, I mean, this movie is about like demons possessing people. So, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people being possessed, a lot of people doing very scary possession voices and things with their eyeballs and 
and scary, you it's know, levitating and things, things with their eyeballs. Uh, oh. There is a whole sequence of like stop motion decomposition. Can't um, wait. <laughs> Uh, there, there is a huge trigger warning for a tree rape scene, um, that we will certainly talk about. Uh, yes. and yeah, a lot of appendages being disconnected from other parts of bodies. Do we talk about the Achilles and the, the, the oh, heel? Yeah. yeah, Brian, Brian loves, uh, Oof. feet and leg injuries the, the benefit of re-watching a movie like this is i know that specifically was coming exactly you know what i mean um also i have an easier time watching um practical effects like that than i mm. do like like other other ways to convey that type of injury if you will absolutely that makes sense yeah. <laughs> grand well before we get into all the things brian do you want to keep telling us some things some words yeah, I would love to. Uh, hi, everybody. Producer Brian here. Uh, just a reminder that we are also on YouTube. Hi, YouTube. What's up? Uh, subscribe hey. to our channel, Talking Horror Podcast. Um, and you can find us on all the social media at Talk Horror Pod. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Um, we have a ton of TikTok followers. Hopefully, we don't lose those. Um, so follow <laughs> us on all three. Me. Um, yeah, all, on all three uh, apps. But we're doing some fun stuff there. And uh, we're considering doing some more fun YouTube content. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but outside of all of that, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We really, really appreciate um, your your eyes and your ears. Uh, it really means a lot to us. So thank you. Yes, thank you. You have to you have to keep subscribing to all of our other things because we don't know what's going to happen to TikTok, y'all. So I know. <laughs> oh, man. I know. Go follow us on all the other social things I where know. we repost have... all of the stuff on there. So <laughs> I know I'm going to have to download everything and upload it to YouTube just so we have it. But uh, yes, just in case, I, I, who knows what's going to happen? Right. This is right. not a podcast where we'll talk about that, but like it's a very yeah. real possibility for sure. Yeah. All that yeah. to say, we just want you to subscribe to all of our other things yeah. <laughs> so that you don't miss out yeah, yeah. on what's happening with totally. talk Talking Horror. So let's talk about things that we have watched this week. I know I have something that I have watched this week, but I'll let you guys go. Go first. No, you go no. first. You go first. What, a, what an intro you, to not you, keep oh, it. Oh, to not say it. <laughs> keep it a secret, guys. Well, I'm wearing this t-shirt because of what I watched. If you are not on the YouTubes, I am wearing my Beyonce Renaissance t-shirt because I watched the Amazon Prime show Swarm. Oh, you did? Oh, you finished I it? I did. Oh, my God. Oh. Tell me everything. Now. I watched it all. So if you don't know, Donald Glover has this show called Swarm, and it's basically – Com social commentary on fandom, right? And he's using the example of Beyonce fans. And it doesn't outright say it, of course, because Beyonce is not going to put her name on anything <laughs> like that. But sure. it's based on this girl named Dre, who is a fan of this Beyonce like artist. Her name is Nija. And Dre gets into a whole bunch of different quirky situations, and I use the word quirky very lightly, <laughs> <laughs> and in ways to where if people are not fans of Nija, they get the chop, you guys. And when I tell you it is graphic, it is everything that I need, and if you are in the zeitgeist world of Beyonce, you will appreciate mm -hmm. it so much because at the top of every episode, it says that any likeness to characters or events that have happened are intentional. And I love that it says that because wow. then you really see and you want to look up what, hmm. what's happening. So there was a moment in time, and I'll just give like this one thing away because it was something that happened in, in uh, the, the Beyonce world in real life, that mm -hmm. there was a rumor going around that, be that Beyonce was at a party for her uh, husband, Jay-Z's new album, 444, and somebody came up to her and bit her her at physically bit her <laughs> what yes and so twitter was swarming all the social media swarming. was swarming swarming there you go swarm <laughs> <laughs> hashtag swarm and it was literally hashtag who bit beyonce <laughs> if really? you look it up it's a whole it's a whole thing and wow. then 
the actress Tiffany Haddish was at the party and revealed who it was that actually came up and bit Beyonce. So that's a bit that is in a no bit. pun intended. A bit bit. <laughs> That's a bit that is in the the TV show. So it's really fun if you are like a Beyonce fan because there are just mm. things that kind of align with her life that that are happening. Um, but I just love how surrealist Donald Glover is. And if you get his his humor and how he navigates, you know, the show Atlanta and stuff, then you'll understand kind of this show. But when I tell you it's so absurdist to mm. the nth degree but i loved every every single minute of it so i would awesome. highly suggest watching that that's my two minute bit on watching swarm it's a lot a lot of gore a lot a lot of insides on the outside so if you can't handle that kind of thing if fandom kind of freaks you out Sure. Serial killing, it's its a lot. But I think that what Donald Glover is contributing to, especially uh, African-Americans in horror, I think it's wonderful. And Dominique Fishback is the lead who plays Dre. And I really hope that she wins an Emmy. It's a limited series, so it's only going to be mm. this season. Mm -hmm. But she did a fantastic, fantastic job. And Billie uh, Eilish is in it, too. Crazy. Oh, yeah, she does yeah, yeah. Chloe, uh, and Chloe, Chloe Bailey. Bailey. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I'm so happy you liked it because um, the other writer on this, Janine Neighbors, yes, mm -hmm. who um, who who was one of the writers on Atlanta and has worked with um, Donald Glover a lot. I went to college with her. No way. Right? I mean, she's older than me. Um, she was a senior when I was a freshman, uh, and like we weren't that friendly. Like like you know. But, but you um, went to school together. We, we went. We're That's both so in cool. the theater department. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and um, I'm just, you know, I don't know her that well at all, if, if at all. Um, but it's just really nice to see her succeed. Um, uh, and and uh, and I'm so excited to watch this. Oh, yes. Yeah, so basically, Brian is famous, everyone. And he's going to get no. mean neighbors <laughs> no, to be no, on this no, podcast. No, no, no. It's going to be a great I, I time. <clears throat> yeah. No, I mean, it. I, they, they knocked it out of the park as far as, you know, just the tone, setting the tone and the horror and the acting was wonderful. Billie Eilish did a really great job. There's a mm. scene where she's part of some kind of um, Nexium type group mm. and it's fantastic. So this is, the social commentary is spot on. 10 out of cool. 10 would recommend. Great. That's awesome. Grand. Yes. All right. Anything you guys have watched this week? Uh, I watched so much stuff. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! Um, I'll I'll quickly go through what I've watched and and like we'll just run them down. Um, I watched Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Oh no! Can you just give me like a number ranking, please? Sure. You you just said it. Oh no. Okay. Great. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> great, great, great. <laughs> uh, so I this week I actually watched the two worst movies I've seen this year. Oh um, man! Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, and The Outwaters. Oh, I don't know what that was. It's a bad found footage movie that Jamie and I watched. Got it. Okay. You can skip that bad boy. It just like oh, no. it's tr it's avant garde, but like it it doesn't get the job done at all, and in the end is completely unjustified. Jamie and I were like very into it in the first like ten fifteen minutes, and then like half hour in, we're like, okay, has this started yet? And then like the last forty five minutes, we kept pausing it to like go to the bathroom. Like, how are there still like fifty minutes left of this movie? Not oh, great. Man. Jeez. Oh, that yeah. sucks. Um, yeah. I I watched Consecration uh, with Jenna Malone, which was better in theory than it was in execution. Mm. Um, she, her performance is great. Um, I watched Horizon Line with uh, Allison Williams about yeah. uh, people getting stuck in like the, the 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 pilot has a heart attack and they have to like fly the plane. Um, that was totally exactly what you think it is. Like, oh, God. The stress. Um, but yes. Yeah, yes. totally. Um, I watched Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear. Is it better than Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey? Like if I had oh, to choose. Oh, much better. So, oh, great. Oh, you go Cocaine Bear over Winnie. Yeah, if you're, if you're right. choosing which bear movie to go with this week, yes. uh, you go Cocaine Bear. Great. Yeah. Love it. Um, I don't know if I talked about it here, but I watched Unseen. Mm -mm, uh, you the direct to stream the direct to like digital blumhouse episode uh movie really good um okay. i would highly suggest that um i wa and then uh i think we talked to you about we watched the missing yes yeah yeah mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was a couple weeks ago that was that's still one of the better ones and one of the best things i've seen this year is a movie called the offering 
Oh yeah, that was on the tick the TikTok. The TikTok. <laughs> uh, I really loved it. Um, it's not perfect, but man, it's well made. And okay. some of those jump scares are fantastic. I was engaged the whole way through. Um, I, I'm I'm actually really excited to watch it again with Jamie. Nice. Where is that streaming on? Uh, I had to rent it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I rented it on Apple, but you can get it Apple Prime. Wherever you rent movies, mm-hmm. you can get it. But uh, in my opinion, for like three ninety nine, five ninety nine, whatever it is, it's, it's really it. solid and totally, totally worth it. Amazing. Um, yeah, uh, but that I, that's I, I watched a lot. I watched a lot. Wait, so okay, how far are you in beating your record of movie scene in the year? Because it seems okay. like you're about to surpass it in two movies. <laughs> so, so. Um, I'm only counting new horror movies from 2023. Oh, okay, okay. So, like, I because I, it's important to me to like get a get a really nice snapshot of the year in horror. Uh, yes. you know what I mean. Like, I'm still catching yes. up. Like, Horizon Line was from 2020. Consecration was this year. Um, you know, uh, um, I also you know, so I'm up to 24 movies total horror movies. 24 horror movies total. I'm above that with like nor with like all genres. Yeah. Um, but for 2023, I'm at 14 new horror movies. So that's nice. Megan missing in in order from the ones I like the best to the least. Mm-hmm. Um, Megan missing the offering. Scream six. There's something wrong with the children. Unseen. Infinity pool. Cocaine bear. Knock at the cabin. Consecration. The pale blue eyes. Snow falls. The outwaters. And Winnie the Pooh. B- Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> blood and honey. Um, okay. I think I went. I did thirty four or thirty five. I forget what the number is. So I'm, yeah. I'm well on my way there. Yeah, I mean it's it's still March and there's still so much. Uh, we didn't even talk about the fact that there was an announcement that Jordan Peele's movie is coming out this Christmas. No, next next, next Christmas. Christmas. Okay. Next Christmas. Oh my, you got me double excited. I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> also, also, Monkey Paw has two, including his, has two movies coming out next. Year. Yes. Yes. So like one that he's producing and then the one he's directing. I man, I'm so excited. Yeah, with um, because what is it? It's competing with the new the other Avatar movie. Yeah, uh huh. That's gonna come mm-hmm. out at the, around the, around the same time too. So yeah, yeah. Oh, Super man. excited. Jordan Peele can do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. Please just. It'll be a great and and then now it's do you think it's going to be a Christmas horror movie or is it he's just releasing it because people go to the movies on Christmas like that's the thing that we do now. Oh, that's yeah. an interesting. I didn't even think about that. I just thought yeah. it's a good time to release a movie, especially right. as counter programming for the big Avatar movie. So people who right. like don't care about Avatar, like there's something else for them to go to, and those usually do very well. Um, but I didn't even think about it being a Christmas movie. Oh man, I would love that, Nikisha. I'm going to be so disappointed if it's not now. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time if you haven't started um, uh, filming yet, please make it make it a Christmas horror movie. Yeah. Make it happen. Make it happen, please. <laughs> yeah. Grand. Okay. Well, are we ready to get into everything that is the Evil Dead? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I know things. Jamie's ready. Jamie's like, I can see it behind her eyes. Like, the, <laughs> join us. Right. Join us. Well, do you want to do the plot summary, Jamie? Since this is this oh. is your vibe, this is your jam. I forgot about that whole part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to tell the people what it's key about. Component. <laughs> a key component of our regular structure that we've done this whole time. Well, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. fair, we didn't do it last week on the uh, oh, the last true, of true, us true. Episode, so mm, you know, mm, I, mm. And I open, but but don't worry, I didn't skip a beat. I opened up the calculator. Whoa. All right, timer. Oh, I will <laughs> say, I I am in the middle of watching a fifteen-hour gameplay of The Last of Us Two, and I'll leave it at that. So, oh, you started oh. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to know what's going to happen. Oh. Oh my so. gosh, Nikisha. Oh my <laughs> oh, gosh. We'll discuss off air. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I'm four hours into the 15 hour <laughs> mm, mm. Amazing. gameplay. So, uh, all fun right. times. Uh, uh, let's uh, uh, plot, plot summary. Yeah, we'll plot summary. Plot, 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 Okay, so five students are going to a cabin in the woods, and it's <gasps> two couples and uh, and one of the main person's sister. So Ash, his sister, his girlfriend Linda, their friend Scott, and Scott's girlfriend Shelly. Um, 
you know, before anything really wild happens, there's just a lot of like creepy voices like join us and the yes. clock stopping on its own. And Cheryl like draws the clock and her her hand is possessed and, you know, it's all weird. Um, they it, they investigate the cellar because that's what dumb white people do in a movie. And they find a recorder and they also find a spooky book that they don't think is the Necronomicon in this. Um, <laughs> they decide to play the spooky recording for no good fucking reason. And it it releases a demonic entity. And then uh, Cheryl gets freaked out. She runs into the woods. She gets assaulted by demonic possessed trees. She goes back into the house. Ash tries to drive her to leave the cabin. And they find that the bridge is destroyed. So they go back to the cabin. Ash is listening more to the tape about like, oh, to kill it, you have to dismember the body. And then all of a sudden, Cheryl is possessed and starts attacking everybody. Um, she stabs Linda in the ankle and like breaks everything and then they seconds. lock her in the cellar um everybody ends up getting possessed except for ash and they taunt him endlessly um he feels like he's like losing it uh but he fights them all off they are all dismembered he's buried them the heads disconnected from bodies uh and then he burns the the book the not necronomicon book and while the book burns then everybody decomposes and explodes and then he goes into the forest and then he gets attacked <laughs> by, the, by the camera and that's the plot attacked did by you, the camera okay did yes you, yeah. did I, fantastic did I do it? nailed it you did nailed it. it nailed it i mean you gave a lot for a lot not happening so this <laughs> it welcome. was a great time mm -hmm. it was it was good Okay, so let's get into everything that is this movie with our first segment, Likes and Gripes. And now our Likes and Gripes. So let's talk about just our relationship with this movie. And Jamie, I would love for you to start because you have a history with this. Uh, so tell us when you first watched this. Oh, and you have a little Pop Funko. Yeah, I got is that a Ash? It has to be Ash. Yeah. What a cutie. And then, yeah, oh, Brian there's two of them. Done. So, Brian, where is it? What, which one is yours from? Uh, mine is from The Evil Dead. Uh, the first one, it's the, the 40th anniversary chase. Uh, ah. Pop, the alternate version of, the, the, of Ash. And then, Jamie, yours is from what? Army of Dead or uh, Darkness? <laughs> Army of Dead. So, um... Jamie's I don't know. Is, I think I have. I, Brian would know. I do know. She, hers is um, the TV show. Hers is from the TV show Ash versus the Evil Dead. Is it? Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. I feel yes. like I've had it for longer than that. Oh, I think when I when I when I was doing all my like inventory of the Funko Pops that we have, I think that's the one that matched. <laughs> mm. I also have this art from our lovely past oh. and future guest Matt Woods. Yes, that looks so great. Right? Oh, and that's so awesome. Good. And to see all of this, make sure that you check out our YouTube channel. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, you're Please. just listening to art. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so my relationship with this movie. So I first saw the, the original Evil Dead movies when I was a wee baby freshman in college. Um, my friend Colin had told me about them and I forget why we like watch them and I know we watched them before Halloween because he dressed up like Ash from the Evil Dead for that Halloween which I'll never mm. forget because I was a freshman in college and so naturally uh I have trauma from Halloween as a freshman in college <laughs> uh <laughs> so I know that I watched yes. it like in that first semester of of college um and I, I like fell in love. I, I think I also like, I, I was probably such like a movie snob at that time, having seen like no movies at all. So <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, look at this like campy. I was like reading all about horror and I was like, look at this like campy 80s horror movie. It's so good. Oh my God. But like separately from like me being obnoxious, I just, <laughs> I think it's just such a good time. Um, yeah. <clears throat> 
the whole series, but obviously we're only talking about the first one. Um, and, you know, it's, I mean, this is like, there's so many other things that you see that are referencing this and mm-hmm. it's, it, you could just like see how, where they got the ideas from and like w- that there's something that's really compelling about this particular story about like, you know, a group of young people going to a cabin in the woods and then like, what's going to happen. Um, right. And like, that's, that's essentially what it is. Like that's literally all that it is. And then it's, you know, for like the first two thirds of this movie, you're getting <clears throat> the, all of them like slowly devolving, getting possessed and, and like what's happening with that. And then the last third is like, you just get Ash, you get Bruce Campbell, like being alone and having to navigate all of this by himself. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, I mean, there's so many places where Bruce Campbell's career could have gone, but I, I, I just love and appreciate how much he puts into this movie, I can't wait to talk about the next ones, but <laughs> he, like, he's just, like, clearly, I mean, his, I was asking Brian while watching this, like, who's the best and who's the worst in this movie, like, acting-wise? Mm-hmm. And, like, Bruce Campbell clearly stands out. Clearly. And, and yes, he's, he is, like, the main character, but also, like, he's just on a whole nother level. Yes. And, and like, he... He's still engaged. Like you said, like, there's not a lot that's happening, but, like, the tension of of him navigating all of these situations by himself, I feel like, is very compelling. And, like, you don't get that without Bruce Campbell. Um, Yeah, for sure. My literal first note is, God, I love Bruce Campbell. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Truly the best So, yeah, I I just think that he is really engaging, that even though, like, the story might not be super, you know, intent it, it's just like very basic i still feel like he can really push the story forward um so that's like one of my my likes slash loves is that i love bruce campbell um i also do love sam raimi i feel like sam raimi has like a particular style um, set of skills <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's uh liam Neeson. um but like his his style once you like start seeing the movies and like all other movies of his, it's like you see you, it like it comes up often. Like if you watched um, the most recent Doctor Strange movie, the Multiverse of Madness, mm-hmm. after watching the Evil Dead movies, you're like, oh, yeah, I can see exactly like the things that he's done just like throughout his career that are very consistent. Um yes. Yeah, cue me like giggling like a schoolgirl in the movie theater watching Doctor Strange being like, I'm so excited that this is happening Um, Mm, because I just I I really like his style. And like it's, you know, it's weird and disturbing. Like, again, like the last third, everything is like filmed on like a diagonal for no reason, like close up Mm -hmm. zoom ups of people's faces diagonally, the doors, the windows like the quick zoom, um, you know, the unnecessary like camera in the woods that's just like traveling with the demonic possessed trees. Um, and the fog, it's all, so much Yeah, fog. it's yeah. all weird and spooky. Yeah. And I love it. Um, you have those, it the, just, point, the point of view shots that he uses a lot in Multiverse of yes. Madness, like the woods ones. Mm-hmm. You also have the shots that are from the ground up. So it's like, it's like, putting Mm. these characters on and like making them larger than life like setting up that like weird like um that perspective like all the tilted stuff like i i personally love like this is a perfect example of watching a uh director's first movie seeing what like pieces of it and then like then we get to see multiverse of madness which is just like firing on all cylinders of Mm. a sam raimi whether you not you like the movie or not as an mcu movie as a movie movie like it is like a sam raimi movie and i yeah i love that Mm -hmm. yeah it it's like just his style i really i've really come to enjoy um so i also like specific scenes that i also really like are the first um, zoom on Linda and Ash's eyes when Ash is pretending to be asleep and like trying to give that gift to his girlfriend and they're playing the like, oh, I'm going to catch you awake game. And like, you're just seeing the (laughs) eyes dart back and forth. Yeah. I love that. But then they bring it back later when Linda is dead and he's preparing to bury her. 
and he's he's like looking down at her and she's like fine without the makeup but then you hear Cheryl banging on the cellar door and then they close up on Linda and like it's the possessed makeup again with her eyes open but they just go back and forth and I loved that um Mm. I was like oh great callback um but (laughs) yeah like stuff like that like those types of things also like I think there's something, I mean, again, I can, I've listened to like so many other podcasts talk about Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, this series, like their relationship is so interesting. Um, Mm. The way that I feel like uh, Sam Raimi is probably just like torturing the shit out of Bruce Campbell in all of these movies is, is funny. Um, But like, it again, it's just like, he's so, Bruce is so willing to like go with it. Um, and, and again, I think that's why this is so good. Um, one of my gripes, as I mentioned in my description is just like, why are people so nosy? Like I've been to Airbnbs before. I don't think that I've gone through every nook and cranny. I've definitely not gone in basements and cellars. Like I have no interest in whatever lives and exists down there. You will not. There was, I remember recently where Brian and I went away with another couple to an Airbnb and like (laughs) the light in the basement was on when we all got there and we were like, there's no way that any of us are going to investigate that. Like we're lucky that we're just staying upstairs and not like sleeping in our cars. I'm not yes. going down there. I don't care that the light's already on. I'm not going down there. So no. it just feels so. I mean, again, this is like the tropiest of tropes. To be but fair, like, I, I did go down there. Oh, I blocked that out of my memory. Right, yeah. So <laughs> good job, Brian. You're the first to die. Um, <laughs> Jamie said, you, no, you absolutely been, you've not. You've been awarded uh, the first to die. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, like, I'm just not that curious. I'm not curious to the point where, like, I'm going to risk my own safety. And, like, not yes. only are they nosy and snooping through everything, which is my actual note, but the fact that they then bring the recorder upstairs, like, mm-hmm. leave that shit alone. Like, leave you it found alone. it. Good for you. Do mm-hmm. not bring it upstairs and then do not play it. Like, I just, like, can't – that – there is nothing. There's truly nothing that would ever compel me to rifle through a stranger's things and then, like – And play, play their with, tapes. Yeah. What yeah. is – I wouldn't what play is a that? stranger's tape. Like <laughs> – That's the – that's where you draw the line. Also, if a book looks – a book looks like covered in human, not touching it. Yeah. Why are you touching it? Yeah. Why are you ugh, ugh, why are you trying to read it? That's like if, if there's VHS tapes. Like if we are in an Airbnb and then there's, you know, like a whole VHS like, Oh my god. That would be a sign that like this is a bad house. Exactly. <laughs> right. Oh man. I don't want to I don't want to be in the VHS. Exactly. Like, in the universe, the VHS situation. universe. Yeah. <laughs> With a VCR, just like, oh, yeah, let's see yeah. with this. And then unless I'm going to meet all over Ratma, again. like, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't need it. Justice for, uh, what was her name? Meg or who, who was the, oh, the devil girl? The, 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 Ma- Mabel. 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 Thank you. Mabel. Justice Mabel. for Mabel. Mabel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, def- I just like across the board, shame, shame on all of them shame. for doing that. Yeah. And also Scott sucks. Like Scott Scott, sucks. Scott sucks. is the worst. He like worst he goes being. down into the cellar. He doesn't respond to anybody. He goes like very deep into the cellar, like yes. in the back of the back of the back room. Yeah. And just like is ignoring when Ash is calling out to him. Like you're a duty head. He's a total duty you're head. You're not a good friend. Not um, a good friend at all. And then you want to leave everybody and oh, you got oh, yeah. attacked by the woods. I'm bailing. So. I'm bailing. I'm bailing. And then it's like, yeah, you you got your comeuppance. Um, what I also don't like is when he's randomly saying dead bodies in the cellar. To Cheryl, mm. like, why is he saying that? Right. Like, why? Why is he like antagonizing her? Um, like, I don't blame her for feeling uncomfortable, for wanting to leave, for wanting to stop playing the tape. Like, all yeah. of that is totally justified, and yeah. Scott's making it worse a thousand percent. Cheryl's one of my likes in this movie because she's the only one with common sense. Like, oh, yeah, we have to leave. This is unsafe. But wait, there's one thing that she should have done at the very beginning when her ass got possessed and was writing in that um, journal, her notebook notebook thing. 
why are you just gonna not say anything to anybody and just go to dinner and be like oh la, 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 yeah, and chatting yeah, with totally. everybody just well, the one yeah, just i, I was, understand everything else but that yeah. moment girl yeah, why are you not talking yeah. to your friends that's fair <laughs> if i get possessed i promise i will tell you guys thank you thank you oh <laughs> that's all we want thank you <laughs> Oh my gosh. If I find Let out that you were possessed and then we all get possessed <laughs> and you didn't tell us, unacceptable. Unacceptable. That that's unacceptable. All I'm say. Yeah, 100%. Just help mm-hmm. us help you, okay? Help Let us, us know when you help you. you. Yes. <laughs> help us unpossess you. Yeah. <laughs> unpossess you. Well, because Jeez. because she also has that line, I don't care how it sounds. Like they're like, "Oh, you're they're like when they're like telling her that she sounds crazy." Right. She has that great mm-hmm. line where it's like, "I don't care how it sounds." Like, I'm going to leave. And I really appreciated that about Cheryl, even though, like, mm-hmm. she was possessed and drew the book they found later. Like, mm-hmm. like no, you got to tell people. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's a you great You have point. to leave. You have to leave right and in that moment. You're telling me somebody was maneuvering your hand and you just thought, oh, it's the wind. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Totally. I don't need to mm-hmm. do anything else. Yeah. But, all right. Mm-mm. Well, at least Again, we hate all, that she wasn't all believed. Bad, at all least wrong. we all have a pact now that we'll let each other know if we were possessed. About the possession. Yeah, yeah, that's great news. <laughs> that's fine. I'll FaceTime you guys when I'm at – oh, we didn't even talk about it. But if I'm at that haunted hotel, I'll, I'll you know, FaceTime oh, you guys yeah. and let you know if I'm in danger. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good foreshadowing. Uh, stay tuned for our Evil Dead 2 episode when we talk about Nikisha's haunted hotel experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Fantastic. Do you have any more uh, likes and gripes, Jamie? Um, I also like going back to the camera angle things. I liked the shot before the set, like when the cellar door opens where they're like taking Mm. the, where they're actually drinking and like taking a shot together. Um, It means party on or whatever Scott says. And then, (laughs) and then like you see from Shelly's angle, like her taking the drink and then the cellar door popping open. Mm -hmm. Um, Love that. Uh, I also like that weird things happen before they find the book and like play the tape, like the Mm. join us stuff and the possession happens before they actually play the recording. Mm, Yeah. Um, And I don't know. I kind of like that. I feel like some of that changes a little bit moving forward, but, um, but at least in this, it's like, Oh, they're like, they were all kind of being drawn to these things. Like maybe that's what it is. That's like compelling them to be so nosy is like, there's just this Mm. energy that's already like, you know, it's predestined. This is what's going to happen. You are going to end up, you know, committing yourself to to demons. (laughs) Yeah. I also, I have that in my likes as well. Just the concept of like there being an eerie aura around the house, like, the swing mm-hmm. is moving. The bridge is broken. Like mm-hmm. the, um, you know, the join us stuff in the woods. You get the point of view stuff even before they open the um, book and the and the cellar. You have the um, the smoke filming of uh, forming. Excuse me, around the moon, like in the mm-hmm. background before all that. Like um, I, I really appreciated the fact that like there's just this eerie aura around the house. Like it's almost like all of this is contained in that like cabin in that area and then by listening to it they release the actual demon and beast and whatnot but like there's still something happening and that's something i really appreciate about this movie for sure i totally agree with Mm -hmm. you but yeah there's not an actual catalyst it's just the atmosphere all around and they're just coming into into that atmosphere i get that Uh also every time you guys are saying join us it just reminds me of pippin oh yeah okay (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Evil Dead's the Pippin of uh, Pippin's of the Evil Dead of musicals. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. Gosh. Yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> sorry. Go ahead, Jamie. Oh no, I was just gonna say like I actually then stopped writing notes because like I just like this movie and I mm-hmm. just like watching all of the like weird possessions and like the state of makeup that people are in that's like progressively getting more and more weird and disturbing and looks like weird flaky layers of flesh on people's faces Cookie. like mm-hmm. how does linda go from looking like a a doll like an actual like little doll like a porcelain to doll then like yeah. sometimes having weird like flesh and then it's just like it looks like full clay on people's heads i mean then obviously it turns to the claymation uh <laughs> decomposition <laughs> scene but it's like and she looks so different from how cheryl looks possessed mm-hmm. like there is mm. no 
it's like all these different levels. All, it's it's all very possessions fascinating. All are different, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a very unique individual yeah, experience. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. I can't depending oh on the person. God. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that that scene is is nuts like when Mm -hmm. when they're all decomposing and like exploding and then like oatmeal comes out of them yeah and and then arms randomly pop out of their bodies yeah Um, roaches truly Mm -hmm. wild i i love it it's it's insane but i think nothing is better than just like the eerie like ash is the only one left everything feels spooky he's he's just like Things are just like coming at him and mm-hmm. he's just, you know, trying to do the best he can. <sighs> Hashtag doing the best we can. Doing <laughs> the best we can. Doing the best we can. You know, as as a first time <clears throat> viewer of mm-hmm. this, mm, yes, mm, yeah. I love a moment to suspend disbelief. I love a kooky... <laughs> You know, we know what's going to happen. Everybody's going to die. This is just going to be camp for camp's sake. And I still had a hard time getting into it. Sure. A lot of my notes start with why, what, and how. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why is this happening? What just happened? How are you not doing this? And I, but I really think it's a great study and what we'll talk about later just in human behavior in general, especially the fight, flight, or freeze, which I'll, you know, ask about when we do uh, brains. And halfway through, I really just had to drop all of my kind of defenses and just enjoy it for face value. And even just, Jamie, you speaking so passionately about it. <laughs> I understand the draw and I understand the appeal and I understand how this can become a cult classic in the sense of how kooky it is and how extremist to the, to the side of, of kooky and campy that this is. Because to me, this would be a movie of, uh, this would be a dra- a great drinking game mm. movie of mm. drink every time somebody does this or drink every time Scotty makes a, a dumb decision, you know, or and just enjoying it in that sense of um, it's, it's more of like a camaraderie movie to me is, is how I see it as like, this is something you watch with a group of people so that you can all have commentary on it. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and that's how you enjoy the movie. It's the experience of watching the movie in a group. But me just watching it, it was not not my favorite. And I love a slasher. I love a Texas Chainsaw. I love a, you know, girl just running around falling on things because she's making really dumb decisions and you know, I get it and it, and it's fine. Um, I just really had a hard time with people m- not moving fast enough in decision making. Sure. The human behavior aspect of this really just took me out because, and here's a few things that were on my gripes. So you have the key. Well, okay. First, first at the top of the gate, when you're going over the bridge, right, and the bridge kind of collapses a little bit, but they get through it and they keep going. Nobody is thinking, how are we going to get back? Because you can't drive through that like bridge through that bridge <laughs> again. There's a hole in the bridge where your whole tire <laughs> fit through there, and nobody just <laughs> nobody bats an eye. I can understand when somebody, uh, one of the girls said, oh, nobody's gone to see the cabin, but we're just going there. I mean, a lot of the times you go to a friend's whatever and you don't see it. So I, you don't, you've never seen the cabin. Great. Understand that. I get it. It's dumb, but I can, I can rock with that decision. You've not seen the cabin. You don't know what the vibe is going to be like, but you're just going there and you're with your friends. So you feel a sense of safety. You're with your friends. I get it. But then you get there. The key is on the outside. Okay. And you go in. But then when Cheryl gets possessed first or when she's in the woods it, because the voice is calling her and she's like running back and then she gets the key and the key is on the outside of the house still. Mm-hmm. Why is the key outside, guys? <laughs> if you are all inside, why are the keys outside so that anybody who's around can just find the key and, and break into the place? That really hard time mm-hmm. with, with that one. But I get, you know, her, she's trying to escape things, whatever. And thank you for confirming that it was kind of uh, a rape scene happening because I was also confused at what was going on. 
what's what's happening with the woods and are the people going to come up from the ground is are they the ones controlling all the woods and things that are happening it's fine still get it love the fog love the you know even as kooky as the makeup was by the time we got to the stop motion claymation Mm -hmm. scene i was rocking with it because okay this is where we're going this is where we're at as far as all of the makeup, as far as all of the the actual dummies that they're just throwing across this the camera <laughs> yeah, lens sure. of people attacking you, you know. Um, so yeah, it's it was an okay experience for me, but it was just still a little hard to really get into it because of just how slow everybody was moving with making decisions of things. And again, like I said before, Cheryl not saying anything about be- her arm being possessed. And just writing down the book and all this stuff. <laughs> just what what are you doing? Talk to your friends. Mm-hmm. That's a PSA to please communicate with your friends. Yeah, talk to your friends. If you have no one else around, talk, yeah. talk to your friends, okay? They, they want to help you. Except for Scott. Scott is the absolute worst. And I'm glad that he got the fate that he did because he is a, a terrible person. Uh, but all in all, you know, it's a fun time. It's 80s movies. It doesn't have to be about anything. I wasn't expecting it to be about anything sure. or life-changing or have a moral. And I'm totally down with movies that are like that because sometimes you just need gore for gore's sake. And I will always be a fan of gore for gore's sake just because you want to make someone feel a certain type of way with uh, blood and limbs being chopped off. And that ankle scene was very... Mm-hmm. And there were a couple of <laughs> jump scares that that did that did get me. Yeah, I hate mm-hmm. to admit it, but there were some moments where I, I I jumped, you know, some some things coming out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, so Listen, a good jump scare is a good jump scare. Like I, I, I exactly at this point, yeah. I like get mad at myself too, Nikisha. But I'm like, you know what? Yes, this was designed to make me poo myself a little bit, and that's okay. <laughs> as long as it's only that's a little okay. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Just as long bit. as it's only just. Just a yeah, tiny, yeah. tiny little bit. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. The little turtle head. And then it goes. Exactly. Back Prairie right. dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, yeah, that's pretty much my experience. Brian, what about you? Sure. Uh, a lot. Actually, I fall right in between you two. Because as I mentioned previously, I this is my second time watching this movie. Um, I had not seen this before. Jamie and I watched it during kind of the, the lockdown when we watched all of these bad boys. And then... Um, <laughs> Nikisha, I have very similar experience the first time I watched this. I mm. appreciate everything this movie is and means, and I love the special effects and Bruce Campbell. But, like, I have a hard time getting past certain points and aspects of this movie. That was not the case this time. Mm, I okay. had so much more fun watching this on a rewatch than the first time because you put all of that expectation aside and now it's just like I just want to see Bruce Campbell like bloody and like being taunted by so demons. So bloody. Yeah. So bloody. <laughs> so yes. my likes are Bruce Campbell, the point of view shots. I love that this movie is 1981 because one of my newfound loves is early 80s movies because it has an mm-hmm. because it has an 80s sense of fun with a 70s aesthetic. I we as we've learned in this podcast, I don't really like 80s movies. Like 80s slasher horror movies, like let's say like mid 80s to late 80s are not my cup of tea. I have no nostalgia for them. I think they're dumb and then they have a sense of fun but they're not that great. Um early 80s movies like Friday the 13th and this one really captured the what I love about the 70s but start to lean into the fun of the 80s and to me that's like the perfect recipe um for that time so this one really nails that for me um uh, and uh I love the small things, you know, like like Jamie mentioned about like the how the house is spooky with like the um the uh the camera angles and the bench swing. Um I I just think the direction of this is amazing. You can just like tell that something something cool is coming from this person because this movie has so much charm and personality. Even though the, it's good bad acting or bad good acting, like what however you want to classify <laughs> it. Like like yes. this movie, it's amazing that this movie even works. Um, the charm and the personality of this movie exudes and oozes, for lack of a better term, is just, like, really special. Um, and I'm really mm-hmm. excited for you to watch Evil Dead 2. Um, my gripes for this movie... I only have one real gripe for this movie, and it's the tree assault scene. 
That's the only real mm-hmm. gripe mm-hmm. I have. Everything else is okay. campy or stupid. Like he's like Jamie and I were like he's boarding the door closed, but like the window is broken and wide open. Right oh my god, I put that too. Yeah, like, <laughs> they're going to go to the window. Yeah, but, what? But that's but that's fun and like whatever. Uh, I like yes. the black humor in this. I think it's really clever. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, I think that something that I'm, I was interested in is that, like, the person who gets possessed first is the one who's not in the couple, so they're more vulnerable. Um, I God. I thought that her going out to confront a stranger in the middle of the woods was boneheaded. Like, come on, Cheryl. Um, inconsistency of makeup is annoying the first time you watch it, but the, the second yes. time you watch it is just, like, wonderful. Because it's like, you're th- yes. everyone looks like they're having so much fun making this movie. So it's really enjoyable to, like, I don't know, it feels like a really good, like, uh, college film. And, and I mean that in the best way, and that's exactly mm. what it is, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Um, uh, I, Can I just say about the the consistency? Yeah. Because that was so annoying, the fact that there was one point, and I forgot who... Bruce had killed, but there was just an obscene amount of blood that just came over. Or maybe it was when he was in the the basement and like the pipe winner or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um. But then the next shot was like him wiped clean, yeah, and there's sure, just nothing, sure. nothing on him. Uh, what is what? I love I love some of this, the all the special effects in this, like from the stop motion like disintegration to the um, condensation on the pipes in the basement. Like, everything mm. is great. I love the score of this movie and the sound effects to this movie. I mean, I like the in-joke that, like, as Jamie referenced before, like, him always being thrown into, like, the shelves and, like, getting, like, beat up a lot. That was fun. Um, but I actually, in the tree assault scene, I'm of two minds of it. The content is just, like, like this is clearly very early 80s, like, of a certain time, like, gross, whatever. It doesn't really pr- – it doesn't add anything to the movie realistically. I mean, you can – you can – you can. there are other ways for her to get possessed. You know what I mean? If if we're assuming that's how like, exactly. the first possession happened uh, or, like, the main right. one. But I, what I will say is the stop motion animation and the special effects to make it look – like these branches are moving and like all of that like movement that makes it feel like this actually is happening is really impressive it's just unfortunate that all of that camera work in that direction was used for that type of a scene if that makes mm-hmm. sense um but uh yeah i yeah. i dig this movie this is not my favorite in the series uh, by any by any means like we'll talk about them when we watch all of them but like I think this movie has way more effect. And Nikisha, I'm, I want to. I'm going to ask you this question after we watch um, the next two. Do you have more of appreciation for Evil Dead after seeing the progression of Sam Raimi and how these movies evolve? Um, mm, so that's yeah. going to ask okay. later on because I, I had more of appreciation for this one on a rewatch. Plus, now having seen the other two movies, um, yeah, so for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see that. But that, that's. I, I dig this. I fall right in between you. This is this is an amazing, great movie for exactly what it's trying to do. But like, I also fully mm-hmm. understand with no nostalgia, like where you're coming from, Nikisha. Yeah, and and you know, with all the movies that we have watched, you do get accustomed, like you said, Brian, to just what the kooks and quirks are of the '80s and how things mm-hmm. uh, are filmed. So you can just say, oh, these quirky shots of these close-ups or the side shots or how things are, you know, the cameras coming in for certain things are just very characteristic of 80s movies. So if it's something that you don't necessarily like, you can appreciate because that's just what that was for the time period that it is. It's also hard for us to look back. It's really hard for somebody to watch Star Wars now who's like 35 because like – They've seen it a million times in all the other movies, Mm -hmm. but like there's something to be said about this being your first experience with a lot of these tropes, with a lot of these things. Yes. So like whether you're new to it and you don't really have a background in horror or whether you were new in 81 to it like most people were or whether you just like like this type of style of movie, like there are so many ways to watch an – historically important movie in a genre because it means mm-hmm. so many different things in so many different ways. Um, so I, that's why I find Absolutely. this movie more historically fascinating um, than I did the the first time. Uh, but this time it was just, I just had a ton of fun watching with Jamie last night. Yeah. I mean, it's so interesting to think about too, because we, Join we us. have previously talked about, <laughs> yes, <laughs> Join us. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> we have <laughs> talked about, 
movies in the 70s and 80s that have come out and people's uh, reactions and um, how they were received back then, you know, like The Exorcist and all those things and, and what that meant mm -hmm. for that time period. Totally. And it's really, it's just a really interesting thing to think about because that's kind of how we felt, you know, when like the Jordan Peele movies are coming out and just of the time and, and how it adds to the horror genre. And so it is having to take a moment and think about how this was added in that time period of the eighties to the horror movie genre and what it did for it for that time, as opposed to having the knowledge that we do and the technology that we do now about movies and then comparing it sure. to how it was in the eighties. It's good to just think of it as it was in that time period and for what it was, you know? Yeah. So also, which, which mm. yeah, go ahead. No, as somebody who cannot really has a very, very, very hard time buying into CGI effects sometimes. Like that's one of my mm -hmm. biggest gripes with the new it movies is that like mm. the second that Pennywise goes from practical to um, digital, I, 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 I'm out. I'm totally out. Fair. Movies like this never take me out. They don't. Pra Even if it's a bad practical mm. effect, I'm more willing to buy into a bad practical effect than a CGI effect that looks like th that looks like a computer did it. Like like the yeah, opening Georgie scene in the in the in the um in the sewer. Like like it's amazing. It's and the second that mm. he opens his mouth and all those teeth mm. is is computer generated. Like I, I, it's mm. not scary to me anymore. It's not. Mm. And, and and this is something that I appreciate about all the Sam Raimi movies. As we move forward, we'll talk about that. Yeah. I feel like I fall in between in that, too, because you can just appreciate how much time it took to do the th um, the claymation mm -hmm. and the, the stop motion, which I'm sure it takes a lot of time to do CGI, too. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. because it's technology and we move faster as a society in general, you know, just really someone taking the time to do all the makeup or, you know, the bones coming out of the yeah. hands and because that's all that they did have. And then um, what could they do to kind of make the process go faster? Well, it's, it's the claymation stop motion, which is wild to think about that mm -hmm. was there kind of advancement in in technology was that uh but it's 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 kind of halfway because if you look at what the movie the fly and some stuff that happens with that i mean that's just such an amazing makeup and and how they navigated yeah. all that stuff but that i mean my last note was what is this stop motion decomposing <laughs> It's like, I get it. Okay. Yes. But wow. And maybe just because the sequence took so long, I think, sure. it, I think I just didn't, didn't need it to be that long of a sequence mm -hmm. uh, with all the moving parts. And also what was the, the blood and, and what did you call it? Brian oatmeal that was coming oh, out. Oh, Jamie. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Jamie. Yes. Out of actually, mouth. I don't know if it actually is oatmeal, but that's what I, I what think it is. It is. But I'll, we'll call it that. That was a wild ride for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, anyone else have any uh, likes and gripes before we move on? No. Um, no? Um, Grind. So. Okay. Well, I just have one kind of question for mm, brains. So here we are in our section of mm, brains. Mm, tasty. So many brains. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get enough. Uh, so when I was talking about my likes and gripes, I was just really having a hard time with the human behavior aspect of, of things because I felt like people were moving at a glacial pace. But then I remember therapist Jamie in my brain about fight, flight, and freeze, and fawn, and all of those things. And so I thought, oh, well, maybe their responses are all just freezing because everyone is just stopping. So my general question is, do you feel general question. like sorry general question uh if do you think that it was a freeze response and if so mm. was it all even remotely believable in in the moment or do you feel like it might have been some other kind of uh responses i know it's I mean, very very general but i'm just thinking of no. just times where bruce would just be watching things happen and not moving at all, not grabbing a, or, you know. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm excited to get into the next ones, but like mm -hmm. for this one, 
I think that there is something that's like, it's just so shocking that, I mean, one, it's like, this is so outside of the scope of, of normal and, and reality that like mm -hmm. how much time would it take for you to kind of like process? I mean, even now we've gotten to the point where like in, in zombie movies and stuff, if someone says zombie, everyone else is like, no, you can't say that. Like, that's not, that's not real. Mm -hmm, and like, they mm -hmm. deny it for so long. And I think that, you know, because we've consumed all this media, we're like, of course it's zombies. Respond accordingly. Yes. But like, I also feel like it's really hard as someone who's never been in a position where other people around them have become possessed and then I have had to kill them all is like, how do you grapple with that? And just mm. like taking in this information of like, what is, what is happening? Like yeah. we we feel like we have more information because we're watching this cohesive story. Maybe sometimes we feel that way as Fair. the audience. Other times, like we only know as much as like what the what the protagonist knows, and so like we're kind of along for the ride. Um, but I think that we can, we as audience members, also have the ability to pull from like the collective knowledge of all of the other horror that we've watched. So we're like, oh, we know that they're possessed. You need to act accordingly. And like the, his his lack of response at first is like confusing and jarring and feels like it's in opposition of what we would do. But like truly trying to imagine, it's like how do you have empathy for a character going through something that's like so completely shocking to your core that like that's what's really happening and like how much time it then takes to kind of like process that to then act we're like watching it in real time yeah where it's like what the hell is going on Fair. and so like that that i'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt again i could be super biased and i admit that <laughs> but like i also feel like you know for for such big 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 t traumas like how long like let's say like a natural disaster like how long mm -hmm. before you start to kind of like grapple with like oh this is like really happening yeah and and the time that it takes to like so that's that's kind of just like your thinking brain which yes. is separate from like fight or flight because that's that's like a biological component so like just in yeah. terms of like like being really conscious of what's going on I feel like that takes some time and then on the other side you have like our the biological response to danger and like how our bodies mm -hmm. are trying to survive like that's that is what that is that's the core of what that is is that like we are 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 we are biologically designed to avoid danger and death yes. <laughs> and so we will have this this response when our adrenaline rushes where we are going our brain's going to calculate for us what's the mo best likelihood of us surviving this and we will respond accordingly and that's like mm -hmm. often outside of maybe how we would like consciously like to act so Fair. If he's still processing all of this, his body also could be like totally frozen because like that's what it it feels like maybe it needs more information to process to then mm. like take action. Um, but like, yeah, it's I also I, I mean, I imagine there's also on the conscious side of things, the hesitation to want to to feel like you're hurting the people you love and yes. wanting that to be the, the last resort option and and we see that too in in other movies and things like that where it's like you know with the people that we love there is that hesitation sometimes it it depends mm -hmm. but like a lot of times we see there's like this moment of hesitation before somebody pulls the trigger or you know cuts the head off or like whatever it right. is but like it's someone that they love and and care deeply for and like that's it takes a lot to get to that point and i feel like you're probably processing and saying I need the most amount of information to confirm that there is no other option here for me. Right. That my only singular option in this circumstance is to kill them. Like yep. it is too far gone. There is no saving them. This is all I can do. They're like that running through all of the like, well, what if this or like maybe they could be fixed or like what if it's not, what if it's temporary, especially when they do the back and forth, like the moment where mm -hmm. Linda is like, don't let them take me again. Like we see that, right, which I think makes right, right, it right. harder for Ash to then be like, do, can I actually do this? And mm -hmm. then Cheryl plays on him too, even though we don't see her, but it's like, it's, it's adding to that equation of like, is there a way for them to be okay again? Do I, do I not have to kill them? So I feel like, again, like for the, 
the conscious processing, like, mm-hmm. you know, the critical thinking parts of our brains, we're probably trying to wait until the absolute last possible moment before we have to do that. Otherwise, yeah. you know, we're going to avoid it as much as we can. But yeah, I think that like, I think that in some, I mean, I unfortunately find that I freeze when I am scared, like mm-hmm. all the time. Brian startles me all the time and I don't do anything and I Just hate it not, because it's wait, like, wait, wait, I'm, wait, not on purpose. I'm not <laughs> no, like, these are all I'm, not like, I was say, I'm not like jumping out of closets or like, <laughs> right. you know, no, I'm just like coming down in the morning or like coming up from downstairs. No, Brian's literally existing and it's scary. And it's scary. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hi, how are you? She'll be like, oh no, there's someone else. Like, yeah, totally. no. No. I'm not like, I'm not like hiding behind, like I'm not hiding in a cabinet for four hours. Like, just, yeah, no. <laughs> No, no, that's not what's happening. Oh, not a no, good no. cabinet no. for Brian four is hours. not trying to scare me. I am just easily startled. And that's, my yeah. response is always freeze, which only makes me mad because I'm like, I, re- I would love to punch someone in response. Immediately. Like, that's, I, like Maybe immediate, not Brian, but. <laughs> no, I don't want to punch Brian in the Thank face. You. Thank I, you. I, I love Thank you. you. I love you and I love your face. I don't want to punch Excellent. you. But like, Excellent. I, I know – I know that my like go to like when my adrenaline goes, my mm-hmm. response is to freeze and I it frustrates me, but it's like I know that it's a biological thing that I can't control. Right. Um, but yeah, it's like it, yeah, that's just it, what's happening in that moment. Right. And I love you just bringing up uh the fact of what is biological and then what are you actually comprehending are two different things that then make you move you know uh because it's literally what i'm still in the middle of walking dead guys i'm almost done with uh season four. Oh, nice and you talking about that just explain it it, it it explains everything about the walking dead because you have people who are holding on to loved ones who are already zombified but they're thinking oh one day there might be a cure and they can be mm. okay and you then there's other people who are know that they're not the who they were anymore they are zombies and then they they just must be killed and you want to just kind of you know put them out of their misery completely so that they can just you know go on to the afterlife and and not be walking around as you know dead zombies harming other people but it is that it's that thing of some people are still just clinging on to what it could be which i totally understand in this movie in this case with um ash and linda that's kind of the only excuse that i think okay because when he puts her on that board and then because he was going to dismember her because that's Mm. what the tape said is how you you know end the things but then he decides okay no i don't want to do that because i still love her let me just bury her until it gets to the absolute point where she's about to kill him and then that's when you have to kind of Mm -hmm. respond but there was just other moments where i thought okay guys you know the whole scotty just take him out Take him out. He's done. He's gone. Take we don't like him anyway. Him out. That's fine. You know, I Linda, she's your sister or Cheryl, sorry, not Linda. Cheryl, sister. <laughs> I get it. Leave her in the basement. Okay. Until you can maybe find something. But yeah. Everything else, just let him go, guys. It's all good. They're trying to kill you. I think it's and even if I mean, I say this as someone who's not experienced a zombie person trying to mm. attack me, interesting, of course. Interesting, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just saying, you know. But, like, if someone's trying to attack you, we would hope that the response would be, you know, not to freeze, but to protect yourself right. in the way of if you want to stay alive, even if it is a, a close family member. Gotta go, guys. Gotta, <laughs> gotta go. I hope that my response is, like, punch first, ask questions later. That's what sure. I want my response <laughs> Yeah, ideal, ideal. Well, response. in a zombie ideal apocalypse, response. I want you on my team. Let's go. <laughs> I might not have the brains, but I got the muscle, so let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So do we want to Rotten Tomatoes this? Yeah, let's do Rotten yeah. Tomatoes for the Evil Dead. It's the Rotten Tomatoes game. <laughs> Yes. What do you think the Evil Dead has on Rotten Tomatoes? Anybody? This is hard. Can go first because I was gonna say like a seventy-two. Yeah, I was gonna say seventy. All right. Well, uh, it has an eighty-five percent 
on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, and okay. the audience score is 84%. So, like, across the board, this is, like, mid-80s. Um, this classic low-budget horror film combines just the right amount of gore and black humor, giving the Evil Dead an equal amount of thrills and laughs. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that's fair. I don't think this has as many laughs as it may have had then, um, but it still has the black humor element for sure. For sure. I, I think yeah, the yeah. laughs come from a different place now watching it um, in terms of, like, this is laughable as opposed to, like, some things in this are funny. Um, I don't know if that was even the intention in 81, but, like, it's still enjoyable. But, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Should we – let's break this down. Let's get into the four S's. Yes. Skull, scare, shakes, and suggestions. The talking horns, four S's. <laughs> okay the four s's as a reminder are skulls scares shakes and suggestions skulls is how we handle mental health and human behavior or how i think this movie handled it scares is how scary was it shakes is how much is it going to stay with you can you shake it off and then suggestions is you know suggest something else that we can go with this movie um and then uh skull scares and shakes are one through ten but jamie let's start with you why don't you skull scares and shakes sure uh Skulls is going to be a four. <laughs> There's, I mean, I love this movie, but I can, I know when people are and are not peopling and there's, there's definitely not yep. a, not a load of people sure. that's happening here. Um, for scares, I'm going to give this a four, um, because I think that there's like some very unsettling, sequences and moments i think that um there's a lot of good tension building mm -hmm. uh you i remember you jumped while we watched it yeah. and your jump made me jump um even though i've seen this movie a hundred thousand <laughs> times uh so it's like there's something about the atmosphere that is still making it spooky for me um for shakes i mean this like it has a 10. I'm never going to forget this movie or the first time that I watched it. And it had such an impact on little old baby me, baby horror Jamie. So that's a, it's a forever one for me. Sure. Nice. Uh, Nikisha. Yeah. Skulls. I'm going to give it a two. No peopling for me. <laughs> uh, scares. I'm going to give it a one because there were a couple of jump scares that unfortunately got me. Mm. Uh, shakes. I'm gonna give it a four. Hmm. You know, it was a good time. I appreciate the, and I, I think I will remember this conversation more sure. than than the movie. Okay. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, my skulls is a two for the same reasons as both of you. Um, just lower. My scares is a three. The jump scares got me. It's unsettling in places, but realistically, like you know, just watching it for fun. Um, and then a shakes. So I'm giving this a six for shakes because yes. of uh, mine is based on pre-existing knowledge of the rest of the franchise the chain like mm. like when, that's fair when somebody says mm -hmm. like oh evil dead movies i think of the second one that's the only one i Interesting. think of. the second one for mm -hmm. me and we'll get to that one next week is like magic um uh and the, and the third one, well i'm very excited to talk about these and how they what and i want to see nikisha how you're in your eyes do these devolve or evolve you know, like, okay. like very yeah. excited for that. And then we just hit a full reset and go for 2013, which is one of the greatest remakes of all time. Horror remakes. Yes. Really? Okay. Horror okay. Horror, possibly. Or I just set you up okay. with expectations that will never be met and you'll come in hating it. So, oh my God. Brian. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <that's fine. laughs> suggestions. Jamie, why don't you start with suggestions? Sure. Um, I mean, I can't not say the cabin in the woods um yeah which you know it just it's so good and um yeah i mean they're just addressing every trope but obviously it's like stemming from the evil dead films i will mm -hmm. also throw out um dead alive the mm. peter jackson horror film um it it might feel more like evil Te evil dead 2 vibes but, like, it still has very much, like, you know, absurd zombie vibe with wild gore. Um, mm -hmm. But it's way more humorous than this one. Sure. But, like, there's also 
a power tool in it. Um, if you can get access to it, it's it is a wild time, but it's really fun. Hmm. Great, uh, Nikisha. For some reason, just watching this movie and talking with you guys, it made me think of Sleepaway Camp. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just, yeah. I, I, yeah. No, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think that you're it's... off. I don't think you're off. Yeah. There's something about how kooky both of them are mm-hmm. in their own right that I just keep thinking about about that movie. Of course, the first thing that popped up was the OG Texas Chainsaw just for 80s uh, OG vibes. But Sleepaway Camp... I, I think there's something there. <laughs> yeah, this definitely has like, like that '70s chainsaw vibes in the '80s. Like I totally yes. mm-hmm. like I I feel that for sure. Um, yeah, mine is uh, I just went with another cabin movie, so I went with Cabin Fever. Um, obviously very different, but just like a solid mm. like cabin in the woods type of movie. Um, Oh, Sean. And then, uh, obviously, I have to suggest Evil Dead 2, because that's what we're watching for next week! Hey. Woo-hoo. So stay tuned, because we're leading up <laughs> to the big old day where we have... Is this, is this a complete reboot of all of the Evil Dead? Or is what? It's, it's not connected. The new one, sorry. The one that's coming out in, in a couple of oh, weeks. Oh, well, let's, let's... I don't want to spoil anything for you. Let's We'll talk about okay, okay, that okay. after the... The, the 2013 remake oh great yeah yeah yeah. fantastical mm-hmm. yes Woo. we all keep keep listening as we go through this watch it with us comment on all of our socials about how you feel about these movies as we uh talk about them but that wraps up our episode of the evil dead you can listen to us Oh, sorry, not listen. You can follow us <laughs> on all of the social. I'm taking Brian's job. Yeah. Uh, on all the social media platforms, the TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter, at Talk Horror Pod. And Brian, where can they listen to us? Yeah, you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. So wherever you're catching them on your pod, um, you can find us <laughs> on things like Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and of course, Apple Podcasts. Rate and review us there. Five stars, please. And thank, and thank you. you. We know we didn't talk about quotes, Brian. You didn't give one quote in your likes and oh, gripes on this. I had, I had three. Uh, we we talked about mm. join us, obviously. Um, yes. We talked about join I don't us. care how it sounds. I just thought that was like mm. pretty, honestly, like pretty like like forward thinking, if you will. Um, yes. <laughs> and my one of my favorites is for God's sake, what happened to her eyes? Uh, love yes. that line. But the real one for this is join us. Join us. Join Join us. us. Next week. Join us next time. (laughs) (laughs) For Evil Dead 2. Yes. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.